Touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. It has been a big week when it comes to sports. We have got the rugby semi finals that are coming up, and we've got South Africa there, and we're expecting that they can do wonders and they throw the All Blacks because the All Blacks are going for a treble when it comes to rugby. And, and this time on the fans, I'm joined by our old boy here, Samuel Monanjuguna, and we are talking about every mother sports rugby weekend that is coming up. Who do you think will win when it comes to the Rugby World Cup? I think all blacks are going to take it. Because they, they have been very, very, very prolific. And I think, yes, South Africa can try and challenge them. But going toe to toe with them, these are players who have been here, done it time and again. South Africa will fall short. Yeah. No, maybe not. The, the gap won't be very big. They will try and challenge. But mm. all blacks all day. Yeah. Mm. Big one there for the Rugby World Cup. It has been a big conversation when it comes to sports and it has been a big week in the Champions League week, week. We have got also the Europa League that was happening. Big wins for Tottenham, Man City. I think um, Tottenham more so yeah. because coming uh, from uh, that draw against Watford and they haven't been playing very well. Yeah. But I think what most people don't really think about is that Tottenham has never started the season very well. Yeah. It always starts with uh, being around 7th, 14th position sometimes and ends up in the top four. So yeah. it is not really a shock, but I think uh, this weekend they are playing um, Liverpool yeah. at Anfield. Mm -hmm. uh, last time at Anfield, uh, Mauricio Pochettino tried to go for a five-man defence. Yeah. That didn't work in the first half. Mm -hmm. Second half, he had Danny Rose play play up front. The same way Manchester United tried to do with the wing backs of Juan Bissaka and Ashley Young to press the yeah. uh, Robertson and Alexander Arnold. Yeah. Hopefully this weekend they get the tactics right and hopefully Harry Kane and Dele Ali can combine to at least a goal for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. good one there for Tottenham. But also Man City was a big one for them in also the Champions League defeating Atlanta by five goals to one. Raheem Sterling is outstanding and yeah. I think his growth is very immense. But one thing people really should talk about is uh, Jürgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola, how they improve players. Mm -hmm. Look at what they've done yeah. with their defence. Right now they're using Fernandinho and Rodley as centre-back uh, centre back po positions. Midfielders. They're pure midfielders. Yeah. You look at, um, and that has been the bigger question about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Can he do that with a player? Can he take a player who plays in a different position, yeah. turn him to a position where he's uncomfortable with, but make him play prolifically in that position? And I think it's outstanding for Pep, uh, the way he has done with Sterling when he came from Liverpool he was being said uh, to be a 15 goal uh, a 15 goal season a player now he's renting 22 now yeah. he already has eight this season mm -hmm. so again it's it's again about improving those players and I think for them this season Pep has denied but I think everyone is looking at them as the title contenders Champions League contenders this yeah. season well but the, the, the big one has been Manchester United fourth <laughs> position and everything that they've been doing is not working for them at all I saw that game in on Thursday, when they are playing partisan in the Champions League, they didn't look like a committed team. They didn't look like a team that wants to fight to gain their status back. Many questions have been asked, but I think um, Oleguna Sosha has said it's a project. Mm. My question really has to be, um, is he really in the right direction? You get yeah. because they have not scored more than one goal since they scored four nil against Chelsea yes. in the opening day, mm -hmm. and that four nil, how they did it was about mistakes from Chelsea. Yeah. Now these are players a who are not creating team, enough. Hey, exactly. Yeah. And that time, if you look at that game and analyze it very well, mm -hmm. Manchester United were just lucky. Yeah. Just lucky. Since then, they, they, they have scored a lot of their games. They have won. Those games that they have won is penalties. And sometimes Marcus Rashford does lose penalties and they get a draw against Wolves and, and you can name it. Yeah. So I think for now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to sit down, analyse his team very well. He, he has been said, um, of course, Edward Woodward this week did say, I know you guys are blaming me, but the manager has the last say. So selling the players, it's about him, not me. Yeah. So I think... And right now, it's him now to sit down with his players and ask them, do you really want to play? And one thing he got right is bringing in um, James, mm -hmm. Juan Bisaka and Maguire. Those yeah. players have been dedicated and they have been outstanding this season. Yeah. So can he be able to bring in, during January se um, session, can he bring in one player, at least forward, who can try and make sure that he converts the chances? You can yeah. look at the, game, the balls that Daniel James is putting in the box. Yeah. Look at the balls that... Um, Nan uh, that also one Bisaka is putting in the box, but they are having no one to finish those balls. So if they have a centre forward, Marcus Rashford is not really an out and out number nine. So hopefully this weekend they can play against Norwich. Let's see what they do. And is that the same pitch Ma where Marcus Man Rashford. City lost? Uh, yeah, it is being put there to be uh, one of their number nines, but it's not working. Martial is also fighting for that position. But when you look at him as a player, 
is not doing actually that when it comes to that kind of. But thing. Martial has only played three games this season. He yeah. has now he has uh, four games, including the one he played recently. Yeah. He now has four goals and three assists. So he he's that one man who yes you won't see him play like running and and doing all that. But when he gets the chance, he's more clinical. Yeah. He's not like Marcus Rashford who wants to score that neat goal. He's the man who just yeah. senses the goal and he just put the ball in. The good thing with him is that this weekend they have Jesse Lingard is back. They've got Anthony Martial who is back and now Rashford and Daniel James. That is a forward line that I would like to see this weekend. Can they be able, because if you look back and see how Lingard, uh, Martial and, 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 and Rashford have combined before, it works for them very well. If you look at the games back then when they were playing against Arsenal under Mourinho, th th those are the three guys who were very keen to breaking yeah. down Arsenal. Mm -hmm. So Pogba could be back, but if he's also back, that is a very strong midfield for them. So I think that combination of Marcus Rashford, um, Jesse Lingard, and Anthony Martial can work. But playing them together consistently yeah. has to be the thing because they have not played consistently together yeah. for a while this season. Well, we are here on the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osora. I'm joined by football journalist and analyst Samuel Monanjuguna. And we are talking about all matters, fans, and everything that has been happening. One tip that has really changed and developed today has got to be Chelsea Football Club. You saw their win against Ajax 1-0 by Shoei scoring that one goal and nobody expected that to happen. Have Chelsea impressed you this season? I got to say yes. Yeah. And one thing that you people won't look at is that Jorginho has been very, very prolific this season. Mm -hmm. And yes, we know we were battling him and saying that position should be in Golo Kante's. Yeah. But if you look at how Frank Lampard is setting up his team, he said he has players running up front. And that is what he was lacking under uh, under Sari and under Conte. He never had players running. Now Jorginho's work is to sit back. Just look for Temi Abraham. He's going to run. Look for Mount. He's going to run. Look for Polisic. He's going to run. So that is one thing that is happening. Helping him so much, but also the likes of Mount and Tammy Abraham. Yeah. We thought Giroud would be the man leading the line. Right now, yeah, he's, he's just roaming the bench actually. <laughs> yes. So I think he has been able to get this team to play as a unit. Mm. But I wouldn't make so much of him right now mm. because see what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did when he got into Manchester United. The players reacted to him. They won 15 games in a row. Yeah. But then again, when the downfall started coming, that is where we can question because most of their games also this season they've won by one goal. That yeah. puts much more uh, of question. Ajax, I think they played. Very very comfortably and yes you could see the goal is coming mm -hmm. um, sometimes they missed some chances police came close yeah. but uh, Mishi Bachuai lost a few chances mm -hmm. but finally put the ball behind the net that yeah. is a very good win for them because again we didn't expect them to challenge in the Champions League this season because, because that was a big statement from Chelsea yes Ajax are way in a uh, semi-finalist actually yeah. so yeah. that was a, that that is a very big statement and I think they're playing Burnley this weekend yeah. Burnley have been uh, have Wood up front who, and Baines who have been very very good this season and those are two different those, two, those are two strikers who are very big, energetic. Let's see how Rudger does, deals with them this weekend. Big one there for Chelsea. We are here on the first one. I'm Robert Osoro. Let's look at the calendar and most of the games that are coming on today.
where most yeah. of their fans uh, we are bro. back here on the touchline. We are talking everything that has been happening in the world of sport. But we are still talking about the NBA and everything that has been happening. Politics seems to be taking center stage in everything that has happened. We've got the El Clasico being cancelled and postponed because of the Catalonia referendum and everything. We've got the NBA and the Chinese road that's coming up. But it is a season for us as NBA fans. We have got to watch it. Yeah, we have to. But again, I think one thing that we have to appreciate is that um, po football and uh, sports has been used as a unifying factor yes. in, 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 bo in most societies. Now, for the Catalonia, that is a very different thing. And yeah. yes, Barcelona are in there. We have got Sevilla around there. Mm -hmm. We have got Real Sociedad around there. Again, these clubs that have been also insisted. We saw players like Pique taking a stance and saying, yes, I want Catalonia to be separated yes. from Spain. So we we even Pep, even even Pep, Pep yeah. also, also say the same thing. So we, let's see what happens. But I think um, one thing that we should not do is to make the game political because yeah. the politics of which we, we are seeing the, out there, let the politics be, let football be the unifying factor. Like, the, for instance, England, um, the English t the English Premier League yeah. is taking a stance and saying no racism yes. and sending the message globally because they are viewed globally. That's, that should be the way. Yeah. Not having um, the... the stands and taking games and saying this is my stand and it can affect the game of course we saw PK being left out of a few games because yeah. of that pressure yes. that was coming in so hopefully that doesn't really affect the game that much yeah. and I hope as we Kenyans are watching the game out there can also learn that we also have our own issues inside here we, yeah. we have heard about tribalism playing part in football yeah. so we should also be watching keenly and seeing what lessons we can take from there well, big one there because the NBA in China has also been most of the games were cancelled because People taking a stand on. I think it was the Toronto yeah. Raptors a chairman. Who this came is about out. the Hong Kong issue. Yeah, the Hong Kong issue. Of, yeah, because mm -hmm. of the Hong Kong issue and everything, and they are making the NBA not good. But away from that, we saw the Toronto Raptors making it to the playoffs and winning. Actually, the Lakers did not do something much. Who will you be rooting for this season? I, I think um, I'm just going to go with the Lakers. But yeah. one thing really I, I, I like about NBA is yeah. the way that uh, sometimes you would, you would think the team that has most stars would do things. Yes. And then it gets, you get into a game and you see they're being battled and you're like, okay, yeah. man, the, I just got it ra wrong. I think the one thing that I've appreciated um, in all my life, understanding the yeah. games, yeah. one thing you have to appreciate is that when you get into the pitch, it's the whoever is most determined yeah. will go back with the points. The yeah. same thing yeah. like Leicester and Southampton last night. You know, yes. Who expected that it would be Nine nil. Who expected that? No, it came out <laughs> Again, nowhere. so yeah. it you, you it has to. You have to understand that sometimes, yes, you would say like the same way we we're saying Liverpool should butter Manchester United. People had put out some scores that were outrageous. Yes. If you saw the odds against Manchester United that game, and then you see the game misplayed, and you're like, okay, Manchester United are leading Liverpool, and Liverpool have to fight back. So it's it's understanding that yes, you would be saying this team yes. looks good on yeah. paper, but when it gets into the pitch, things are different. Yeah. We took a ground in different. <laughs> 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 the big one there, we've got the NBA season also opening up. They play their opening weekend last weekend, and also we've got game two that is happening this time around. Many matches will be over. So if we go to NBA League Pass, you can be able to watch those matches. But also here on White Top, a four sports will be bringing you all the updates when it comes to the NBA season that has just opened. LeBron James is away with the team doing what retired a big one for them but we'll see how that game pans out let's finish with the balloon dollar nominations we have got the <laughs> nominations for the balloon dollar they are out let's see what someone has got to say about those nominations because i've got many players on that list who do they deserve to be on the list or do not deserve? For you, who do you think will win the Ballon d'Or first? Of course, we know the top three. Of course, yeah. it's given. We already know yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, unless, unless they surprise um, in in terms of what we saw uh, yeah. again, the the player prize uh, when which went to Modric, yes. uh, which was a very big surprise. Yeah. And we saw we've already seen Cristiano Ronaldo refusing to attend some of these events. Yes. So, uh, I, I guess for me, I'll still I still think. Um, I can't say an African will take this one. I, I thought it, it, it would get yeah, closer. Sadio Mane is it? We have got five Africans. That, yeah. that, is, that is a very good improvement. Yeah. Five Africans in yeah. there. But I think the names like Cristiano Ronaldo would stand out. Uh, someone like uh, Robert Lewandowski, who has been very, very prolific this season yes. already. He has scored, he, it's as if he's scoring a goal every game he's playing in. Yeah. Um, I think Lionel Messi. Uh, and also, uh, one thing that people would, should look at is how many players of Liverpool have been outlined in uh -huh, this, yeah. this Ball and Duo nominations. Of them. Uh, you have got Mane. You've got 
got uh, uh, Salah, you've got Van Dyke, you've got Alisson, uh, you've got uh, also uh, Roberts. There was, uh, I think, Robertson is yeah, also yeah. in there. I, so, I, I Trent Alexander. I Trent Alexander Arnold. Arnold. So list, yeah. that that is that shows how far Liverpool have come. This yeah. is the same Liverpool that a few seasons ago we were talking about them being in the same place where Manchester United is in right today, now. Yeah. So it, 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 it is a very great improvement thanks yeah. to Klopp and his team, and also the the, the recruitment team inside uh, Liverpool is doing a great job. If we look at the first 11 of this, let's say, where they are going to make it and come out, Jung Min Song of Tottenham is on that list, but Joe Felix I think that, that that is, is a it? surprise, man. That is a surprise. <laughs> and I, I, I think he he. Uh, I had some talk last weekend yeah. that he wasted himself going to Atletico Madrid. Yeah. Uh, he should have gone to a club like Manchester United, where he was assured of a number uh, uh, he could play, or a team like um, Manchester City, where yeah. he could be developed mm -hmm. uh, or under club or somebody like that. But it's also it's also wise to know that um, somebody like also Alexander Arnold yeah. is just twenty. But mm -hmm. the, the key thing is to notice that Trent is here simply because of that creative spark that he had. Yeah. during the game against yeah. Barcelona where Liverpool had to come back after that yeah. camp new demolishing. But so so it, it, is, it is that creative spark that they're also looking at in here. Big one here that on that list for the first time in three years or four, we are not seeing name on the list. <laughs> I mean, he had a terrible season, and yeah. and I think everyone now can accept that he it was a bad choice for him to go to uh, yeah. France. And I, the the lack of competition in France has also been yeah. a very big. Uh, yeah. big ha Harry Kane also not uh, on the list. I don't think Kane can can make it here. He can make the cut. He, he, he can make the, the cut. Of the oh, yes, but he can make the cut. He was in the finals actually. Yeah. But he can make the cut because you have got the likes of Robert Lewandowski ahead of yeah. him. You've got uh -huh. Firmino ahead of him. Mm -hmm. If you look at the front line of of, of Liverpool, those yeah. three players, the number of goals they scored, and if you look at the front line of of of, of um, the likes of Tottenham, I think Huming Son is in there because of the contribution he makes for the team. He he may not score in every game, but he will provide. He will yeah. he will be one, one key player for them. And it's the same thing that happened during the Champions League yeah. game this week yeah. he was a key player for them the first goal he got the first goal uh, he got the second goal yeah. and also assisted in that so he is he's a key man so the big question will be from your nutshell will we see Van Dijk lifting it or who can we see lifting this one up <laughs> are we talking about the same Van Dijk who was disturbed by Rashford or you're talking about Huh? Uh, last season he was prolific. Let's yeah. let us be honest. Yeah. Last season no one dribbled past him. Mm -hmm. But this season already Marcus Rashford has made a nuisance of him. So yeah. um, I think uh, we, I, I still think Messi or Ronaldo will be taking this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not Koulibaly. Uh, no, I don't think he comes close. Man. <laughs> he doesn't even come close. I don't think he makes even the top five Koulibaly. Yeah. I don't think so. It will be Van Dijk. He will be mm -hmm. seeing Van Dijk. De Bruyne will be in there. Eden Hazard. Eden Hazard, Eden Hazard, Eden Hazard could, could, could so make far. could make it in there. But I think the name like Raheem Sterling could make a, a, a cameo in that top. So, uh, so why is there someone like Abu Mayang being on the list? The number of goals he's caught. Ah. Yeah. It's the number of goals purely. Because yeah. if you look at uh, but, somebody but like Aguero... Kenna, there are also some good goals. Yes, but mm. again, mm. look at the team he's playing in. Yeah. Uh, how okay. many players do contribute into that, mm. you know? Yeah. He's the only man from Arsenal, you know? Mm. <laughs> so you can see how, how good he has been. And I think it's also about a, a longevity of a career. Yes. Harry Kane has, can, does, he gets at least an average of 20 goals every season. Yes. But Aubameyang is a man who ranges between 25 and above. So when he was at Dortmund, he reached even 30 goals. And he was the fastest man in the Bundesliga. So. Yeah. He is that good. As we are finishing up, which game will you be watching today? Um, the entire weekend, which will be a highlight of the weekend. I, I think, first of all, uh, Manchester United Norwich. That is the last game of the weekend. But the game everyone is looking at is uh, that I will be keenly following the Chelsea game against Burnley. Yeah. I'm hoping Burnley can do something. Ma <laughs> Manchester is playing Aston Villa at home. No, it's not at Aston. Man City is playing Aston Villa. Yeah. Um, Man United is playing Norwich, Norwich away. 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 Yeah. Now, is, is that, it's a tough ground because yeah. they've been performing. Norwich have been very, very uh, good at their at their tough. Yeah. And it's the same place that Man City was was torn apart and no one expected that. Yeah. I hope this weekend he doesn't go for Fernandinho and Rodri. He at yeah. least plays uh, Otamendi. But the problem with Otamendi is the undoing he had against Wolves. Yeah. Jimenez made a nuisance out of him and Pep thought, man, I, uh, you can't do it. Prediction between Tottenham and Liverpool? Um, I think Tottenham will come close, yeah. but I'm giving it to Liverpool 2-1. Yeah. Mm. It has been the touchline here on Y2544. Everyone who has managed to bring this broadcaster success, I'm Robert Osoro, has been Samuel Mwananjaguna. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast. It is Y254, the touchline. Enjoy. <laughs>